Come on, it's lovely where the four sleigh ride together with you. There's a Christmas party at the home of Farmer Gray. It'll be the perfect ending of a perfect day. It'll nearly be like a picture print by Courier and Ives. These wonderful things are the things we remember all through our lives. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy, cozy all read. Anyways, my name is Brian Saviano Bricks O'Brien. It's not Christmas time. It's not the holiday season. It's kind of the holiday season. It's spooky season, Halloween season, getting with it. This is an abandoned carnival, and this is a... My newly renovated theater, the dropper of horrors. We have many delights in store for you, including our revolutionary 3D technology. Watching films is a thing of the past. Falling through them at a deathly breakneck speed, however, that is the future. Pick a film. All three acts are in the same hallway. Pick your act, then make your drop. Be careful, though. It's a long way down. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, dear. These Minecraft maps need much better voice acting, but I'm going to go do a dropper map because I haven't done one of these in a very long time, and it's a spooky themed one. We have... Hi. You want to play hide and seek? No. If you win, I'll give you a prize. I hide in the theater sometimes. They're awfully cozy. Am I here? Am I there? Come see. Come find me. Then we can play. Forever and ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> What about this one over here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Got, 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 got. Night of the Missing Pet. No? No dialogue. Okay. What about this one here? The Wicked Pumpkin. No dialogue. Okay. I'm going to go toward the creepy uh, girl doll thing. She made the best case. What is this? She made the best case for me to go say hi to her. So yeah, these are meant to be spooky, not uh, terrifying here. I am not a scary Halloween fan. I am a spoopy Halloween guy. So, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, that sort of a deal. All right, so there's three acts to each of these movies, which is cool. Escape from the Blozark. Is that another map by these guys? I mean, these guys do great work. They have the, the mech one, this one here. So, yeah, all sorts of cool things to explore and see. Uh, this is act number one. Oh, it's like an actual movie theater. That's pretty sweet. Okay, do I want to start the super creepy narration or do I just want to go for it? I feel like to be fully immersed, I should do the super spooky uh, narration. So, let's see. The Howling Forest. When little Timmy and Ben asked their parents if they could go camping, they said no. There's wolves out there, it's too dangerous, his mother said. We'll take a trip somewhere else next summer. But little Timmy and Ben didn't listen, and they didn't want to wait. That night they climbed down the dark steps to the cellar and packed their camping kit. Sleeping bags, lights, snacks, and most importantly, marshmallows. They snuck out into the forest, going deeper and deeper into the woods until they found their spot. In between trees, shielded from the wind, a level ground, and no parents. Timmy and Ben quickly built a fire and got out their roasting sticks. The marshmallows softly sizzled over the embers of their fire, and their laughter rang out through the trees. Their parents would never find out, they giggled. Oh. But they did, only two days later, when they found a ruined campsite. We're not going to read the narration for the rest of them. All right, let's go. Drop top. Ah! Score. Yes. Got it. 
That was pretty cool. Oh, look at that. So it's like camping. Ah, oh, that's pretty sweet. Interesting. So these what th these maps always really freak me out because of how super in depth. Look at this. You want to be able to tell that it's like the the vertical perspective here just by looking at this. That's why I really like all these different type of maps. So bear with the narration, bear with the story here. I'll I'll, ex I'll read the story, but yeah. Howling Forest Act 2 has been acquired. I like that these lights are flickering too. That's pretty sweet. So it's all the different theaters here with different acts and whatnot. So I will read this. I will not uh, read the narration. Timmy and Ben gorge themselves on candy and chocolate. Their tummies weren't bloated and all they could do was lie on their backs. I think we ate too many marshmallows, said Ben. Me too, said Timmy. Ben clutched his belly. I think we need to take a tinkle. Peeing? And he wandered off into the woods. The first 10 minutes Ben was gone, Timmy wasn't worried. But after 30 minutes had passed, Timmy was trembling in his shoes. Where was Ben? Why hadn't he come back? Ben, he called out. But there was no answer. The wind whistled between the gaps of the trees and everything seemed sinister. But little Timmy was brave. Maybe Ben had just fallen asleep. Timmy stood up, took his light, and tried to track Ben's footsteps from the camp. First they laid to a tree, but then there were more tracks and they weren't just footprints. A large, wide press like a sledge had been dragged across the forest floor. Ben must have found something big and dragged it somewhere. He was probably trying to hide it from Timmy. He always did annoying things like that. He never wanted to share. Timmy followed the tracks until they lead to an old spelunking cave. They led to an old spelunking cave. The iron grates in the front of the cave had rusted and bent. Loose cobwebs hung on the bars, fluttering gently as cold air flowed out of the cave. Timmy hated spiders, but this is where Ben went, so that is where we must go. Besides, little Timmy had a light. Little Timmy was brave. Brave little Timmy into the spelunking caves, into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Oh, da na 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 Okay, try it again. Into the... Ooh, with the spooky sounds. Into the thick of it. Ah! Okay. Well, I see the spider there. Interesting. All right, go this way. Oh! Never mind. Okay. So it's going to be an automatic downfall no matter what. All right, so we're going to go this way and then back over here. This is super... Oh, there's the spider. Hey, at least I found the spider, though. Going to go this way. Up! Oh! Up! Oh! Right here? Right here? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you saw it, though. You saw the way you saw it go. Oh, avoid, evade the spider. Evade this. Yes. There we go. Bada bang. Through the caves and the spider had been no more. I want to go through here and I want to see each of these when they're all done. Like explore in creative mode, just like I normally do, you know, just because they look super cool and interesting. I want to play this. Is this a map? Escape from Blozark. I'm going to have to keep that one in mind. Uh, Terra Swoop Force? I don't know what that is. I don't know. But Act 3 of the Howling Forest. <laughs> do we do the narration? How many, how many pages? Five pages? Let's see. Inside the cave, spiders scuttled away from Timmy's light, crawling into small cracks. The larger <laughs> ones stayed their ground, eyeing little Timmy as if to dare him to break their web. Timmy! But he well, didn't. Timmy crept and squeezed past any gap that he could. Ben was down there somewhere. A bat squeaked and flew out of the cave as Timmy approached, and he yelled out in surprise. After he realized, Timmy laughed at his foolishness. It was just a bat, not scary at all. Just then, he heard soft footsteps approaching him from the other side of the cave. Ben? He called out, but no answer. Ben, if that's you, stop it. It's not funny. Stop the it. Stop stopped. it. Stop it. Ben? Little stop Timmy it. raised the light above his head, peering into the darkness, but he couldn't see anything. He walked further into the cave, every muscle tensing in his body, willing him to turn back. But little Timmy was brave. He wouldn't run from footsteps. Just then, Timmy saw a dark figure move in the shadows. Ben? He called out. Ben! But it wasn't Ben. ben! The dark figure leapt at Timmy, and the last thing he saw was the dark yellow eyes and sharp white teeth 
of a shaggy gray wolf. <laughs> the wolf and I'm hung. Okay. I was gonna say, and I'm hungry like the wolf. Oh! Right through, right through, right through, right through. Oh, how on earth? You gotta go through the belly of the wolf. This way, right through this way. Down that way. Oh, yes! Right on through. Nice. I am in the, the intestines of a wolf. And I think that's how I'd spend my uh, Tuesday evening. All right. Two days of rain followed little Timmy and Ben's camping trip, clearing away their tracks. But their parents still searched for them. A whole search party scoured the forest, but it was only on the second day that they found Timmy and Ben's campsite. The tents were torn and shredded. The food they hadn't eaten scattered across the floor, soggy marshmallows and sandwiches left by a fire that had long since fizzled out. They never found Timmy or Ben. The only thing left was Ben's coat, caught on the prickly branches of a pine tree. So, the creepy part is not only the little girl laughing, but the directional audio that's a that's a trick in a lot of these horror movies, especially if you're watching in like an IMAX theater or something, having like all the different directions where all these different, you know, sounds come from. It adds to the overall immersion of the thing. I don't know what this is, but, you know, each time you find me in a film, you get one piece costume piece. Unlock the full outfit, then the door shall unlock. What's oh, like a whiz pig looking thing over here. What? Each time you find me in a film, you get one costume. So am I supposed to encounter it? Like, touch it? Like, is it, is it a drop? I don't know. I got to figure it out. So clearly there's one that I could have got before, but I didn't get it. So I'll go back and find it, I guess, eventually. I'll, I'll see where they are. But until that time, I'm going to continue through to whichever this one is, the night of the missing pet. Ooh. Popcorn? Popcorn? All right, never mind. You can have a seat as much as you would want to. What do you got for me? Night of the Missing Pet. Ooh. Oh. Zombie loved his cat. See he it? called her Emmy. Do you see it? And they right went there. on all sorts of trips together. Look. They went running by the right river, there. climbing over rocks, I gotta get and lazing under trees. Oh. But the most fun was when they terrorized the local villagers of Wheatburn. Wheatburn. Emmy would lure the villagers around corners with her soft meow, where Zombie would be waiting you know, meow, meow, to meow. scare them. Meow, meow. But now, those times were over. After their scare trips, Zombie would be tired. But Emmy was always still full of energy, so she would venture out into the wild on her own. Sometimes she wouldn't be back for days. But this time, it was much longer. After a week, Zombie went out searching, and he found her by the riverside, bruised and broken. The villagers had taken their revenge on his cat, Emmy. Zombie was stricken with grief and hate. His friend, the mad scientist, tried to comfort him, but Zombie couldn't shake it. The villagers need to pay, but they would wait. First, Emmy needed to be buried. Zombie took her body to the local graveyard where he began to dig hard and fast. He didn't look up until he was surrounded by the dirt walls of the grave. When it was deep enough, he climbed out to get Emmy, but she was missing. He looked everywhere, but he couldn't find her. The only person who knew he was burying her tonight was himself and his friend, the mad scientist. scientist. Zombie looked up at his friend's castle. The lights were on in the windows. The strange contraptions working their green smoke. Maybe the mad scientist wasn't his friend after all. So that thing is right there. What does this do? Oh, it's a different location. Okay. It's a different location. Okay, so I can choose to go this way as, a, as opposed to the other way. Okay. Oh. Okay, that is not the way to go. I don't know why they even give that to me as an option. But how do I get back over here? 
Like, that thing. See, clearly that's what I need, but... Whatever. Through the gates. To rot inside a corpsey shell. I see the exit right there. Why? Wait, is that a different one? That seems like a little bit of a different area. Interesting. So does that happen in a couple different facets? It probably does. Yeah. Oh, the hand! The hand shall catch me and make me shall I live, breathe, and die. Die. Yes, we really. Oh, okay. All right. Try it again. Take two. Take three, four, five, whatever. Through here. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Whoops. I forget what button I hit. My bad. R.I.P. Cat. Ouch. But here's what it looks like from uh, the way it's supposed to be oriented, which is super cool. But yeah, it looked like it was a different location before. All right. So yeah, I can go back into here, obviously. Now, does anything change over here? Because that might be what allows me... Oh, this wasn't open before. What? Really? Whoa, okay. That's bizarre. <laughs> what is that? You see that, like, shadow? This is freaky. Super freaky. All right. But what do I do? What? I guess... Uh, I don't know. And if I try to go through here one more time, I know I'm being over overly complicated here. Hold on. Okay. So it doesn't insta kill me, obviously, right? But is there any way that I can get through here and like explore? I feel like there is not. They probably designed this specifically, so you're not able or not supposed to do this, but clearly I'm just the best. Oh, and it auto regenerates. Interesting. Okay. So I can do this and eventually, actually, yeah, I can do this. And I can go all the way down. It's going to instantly regenerate me. Interesting. Okay. So if I really wanted to. Not, not that this is, like, relevant to what I'm doing here. But it's actually kind of interesting. All right. Let's see. What's the best way? I think the best way is down here, right? It has to be dead. Oh, not quite. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's terrifying. Okay, so there are sections you're supposed to jump down and, like, explore. Clearly, that's one of them right here. So, all right, I'm going to intentionally die right here. I could have jumped off that oozy thing right there. The oozy thing? Hello? I could have jumped off the, the slimy thing. Interesting. All right. So, I'm going to go do the next act and then look at what the two, um, hopefully two, things are that are unlockable little items here. Oh, there's swords and all this stuff. Oh, oh, okay. Well, let's take a look at this. Book number two. Zombie quickly ran up to the castle and burst through the door. Mad scientist, he yelled, where is my cat? He raced through the hallways of armored knights, shiny swords, and crest shields, but he couldn't find the mad scientist's laboratory. Zombie would get lost in his castle before he found Emmy, but it didn't matter. He had to do it. He had to avenge her. He burst through the door after door, pushing over armor stands and decorations throughout the castle. Destruction and debris followed Zombie's wake. He would level his he would level his castle to the ground if it meant finding Emmy, but he didn't have to. He turned a corner and saw the telltale green hue of his old friend's experiments. A tall iron door with the metal grate stood in his way. I'm coming, Emmy, said Zombie, and he pushed the door open. There's no wisp around here, right? Just making sure, because I did see one before. Maybe that was just like a teaser. I don't know. But I'm going to complete it, then do the thing. Okay. Oh. Oh, a bouncy section there. Okay, maybe that's intentional. Intentional for me to hit that right there. That would be it. Yeah, that looks like it could be it right there. Okay. So that kind of helps me get a smooth bearing on what to do here. Right? Get on through, and then back down here. Boom. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so that one, these are pretty, like, easy droppers to do, but obviously all of the um, the story elements certainly add a lot more to it than most of the other droppers that I've played. Actually, all the other droppers that I've played. Is this a catapult or a trebuchet? This is a catapult, okay? Just so you know, there's a lot of online controversy. A lot of these neckbeards complain on forums, okay? about the difference between a trebuchet and a neckbeard. And it, the trebuchet 
and a catapult. A catapult is exactly this, where there is a, a rope holding this down, and then it flings. That is a catapult. A trebuchet uses a weight in order to fling the whole thing instead of it being a rope mechanism. So this is a catapult as opposed to it being a trebuchet. Does that information have any relevance to your life? None whatsoever. But why else do you watch my videos? Anyways, let's try. Let's see if I'm more. That's deaf. Okay, never mind. Let's try to find this other wisp. Hopefully somewhere around here. Nope, that's also deaf. Try it again. Over here. Maybe right here. Yeah, I feel like it's something like right here, right? Uh, you gotta you really have a nice look around here. I love the way that these knights look and all that. The thing that would have made this the bee's knees really and truly, if there was a texture pack of some kind, that would have probably added a lot more to the overall gist of the thing. But I love this hallway. This hallway is uh, very nicely designed overall. Um, let's take a look down here. I'm going to do this. Oh, I did the thing. Dang it. So I held shift on there, which I clearly was not supposed to because I didn't bounce enough times here, right? So it absorbed my impact like that. I should not have done that the first time through, but that's okay. So let's see if there's anything else here. It looks like, hmm, is there any, hmm, wait, right there? No, it looks like it though. It looked like it a little bit. Ooh, right here. Okay, I'm going to go right, right here. Bounce it all around right here. Yeah, you see it right there? Yeah, that's it. Okay. How on earth? Uh, Wing it, YOLO swagons, go. No. Oh, you saw what I was trying to do there, though. Okay. So I need to bounce on top of this thing. Well, not quite that thing. I need to bounce on the middle section easily here. All right. So do this. Don't go on that. I'm going to wait for this to go. Okay. Just like this. There we go. Now, what about over here? Um, okay. No, that's not what I meant to do. No, Deborah. Okay. Let me try it one more time. Not one more time. I'm going to get it. I'm totally going to get it because it's not that difficult. It's really not. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. Not, not right now. But anyways, I'm going to leave it. And I can end up going back in creative mode. It's fine. I'm not really super concerned about it. But I do want to see what one of the unlockables is. And then I'm going to finish the story in the next one here. Because if the outfits are worth it, I, I don't think they're customizable skins or anything. I think they're just for the sake of having the fun of it to unlock, you know, whatever the outfits are. Let's take a look here. All right. So there's different, like, heads, basically. Um, that's each of the different sections there. But they're not entirely something super special. But yeah, I'm going to finish up the rest of these and do more spooky stuff. Because that's how that goes, you know, gentlemen. That's where I would basically go, right over here. Oh, they're private porta potties. Nice. All right. I'll talk to you for more of the dropper spooky stuff next. All right.